Hi there, trans family. I am Ona, and in the next couple of minutes, we will chat with one of the hottest names in the trans scene right now, the one and only Darren Porter. I'm still pretty excited he accepted my invitation because I remember our first conversation at Luminosity and it wasn't my greatest moment. Luckily, Darren is such a nice guy and accepted my weird idea of a photo and that made the event a lot better for me from that point. We met again at FSOE 450 in Manchester, UK and I couldn't lose the chance to interview him. We talked about trans, about artists, about his upcoming plans, we talked about feelings, about two trans awesomeness. So I hope you guys will enjoy this interview and get as inspired as I did just by chatting with this music man. Who is Darren Porter in real life? Who is Darren Porter in real life? Um, well, I don't really take much notice of myself. So uh, <laughs> no, um, I'm I'm actually quite a quite a laid back kind of guy. Um, I enjoy the little things in life. Really, I'm not a materialistic kind of person. I'm not really um, I'm not really bothered about wanting many things. I just like to if I get ideas and lots of inspiration. I'm very spontaneous. <laughs> Very spontaneous kind of person. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm a easy outgoing guy. I think. Anyway. <laughs> when the when the idea of producing music first crossed your mind? Very when I was very very young. Um, I remember when I was at school, and our our music department had a really old well, computer. Uh, I think it was an Atari or something. Oh. Really old, this huge big monitor thing, and on it was a program, and in front of it was a keyboard, and I used to like play around. I couldn't play mm -hmm. anything, but I, just, I liked the idea of being able to play. But then someone showed me that you could record what you were doing. I was like, wow, oh, okay. I thought I was play along and play along. <laughs> and I'm, I must be about 11 years old or something, or 12 years old, really young. And I realized I enjoyed it. And as the years went on, I got like a keyboard at home and like, yeah. eventually got a PC at home when they were kind of popular and then uh, MIDI cables and started to get really involved with it. So it started a long time ago and it's always been a hobby and it's just evolved and grew into what it is now. Mm -hmm. And my favorite question of all, actually, why did you chose trans? I don't think I chose trans. Cliche is trans chose me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not really. Um, I think in the late '90s there was a, this influence of like uh, pop music, which was like with rap and like Eminem and Dr. Dre yeah. and Snoop Dogg. That kind of thing was really popular, and everyone was like cool and crazy about it. And I didn't. I, I liked it, but I didn't really get it. And then I heard some like mixtapes of some people, and, and I remember actually the, the pinnacle moment. I was in a car with some friends, mm -hmm. and we pulled up some traffic lights, and the car next to us was banging out this trance. I was like, yeah, doesn't this stuff is crazy? And then um, I heard it again, and I realized what it was. It was just this whole new kind of explosion of trance music. And back then, it was just starting to become a kind of like a commercial or popular yeah. kind of thing, like the beat the hair days and stuff. And um, I got hooked. I was, I was hooked on it. I was addicted to it. And I needed to know more and listen more. And I wanted to try and make more melodies and stuff. I was, I was, I was obsessed what, with it. What does trance music mean to you? To me, uh, well, trance music is subjective different people. Some people yeah. like the power and the energy and the feel it gives you. So they they, 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 they would think trans music is all about the kick of the bass. Yeah, yeah. For some people, trans music is a journey. It's really sort of subtle, repetitive, progressive sound exactly. which you can get took away with. Some people think it's melodies and harmonies and breakdown, energy release, this kind of thing. So subjective, but for me, it's melodies and um, harmonies and that kind of how music and textures and sound effects all blend together into, into, into what you perceive trans for me anyway coupled with a nice <laughs> good driving base what's your what's your biggest accomplishment oh, till now well till now well to be honest when you start well so when you start you don't really have a definitive start point you kind of just realize you're doing this yeah and you always set yourself little goals and they are little goals you set yourself too high you you set yourself up just disappointment pretty quickly so my first few goals were get a track signed get a track supported by your favorite artist mm -hmm. get a gig Get yourself on a on a on a radio show. Again, these were all little goals. So these were big, big accomplishments for me. And and you keep setting these little goals. So I've had many big accomplishments. And it's unfair to kind of pick one out over the others because at okay. the time, like my, I always wanted to have like a sort support. My track and player by Armin was amazing. <laughs> and I never thought it would happen. What I did, I remember how happy and elated I was. So that was a huge accomplishment. So each as every year goes on, the accomplishments I set the goal mm -hmm. and I and I pick this up. Like for example, my first number one track. I was that that was just amazing for me. Really gobsmacked and humbled by it. So that 
was equally as good to get the first ASOS. It's all yeah, the same yeah, sensation, yeah. so it's hard to kind of define what my major accomplishment was, and hopefully there's many more to come. Which single track had uh, the biggest impact on your career? A track of mine? Yeah. Um, I think the ball started to roll pretty quickly after um, the era went on Spellbound with Terraforming, I think. Um, but if you ask me my, when things really started to mm -hmm. hit on, was actually pretty recently, um, when, I, when, when Deep Blue yeah. done as well as it did. Awesome. And that's made me feel a lot more pressured. Because <laughs> <laughs> once, you, once you have this kind of response to a track, which I didn't yeah. expect and I'm very happy with, and with it hitting number one also, it was the first number one I had, um, the, 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 the pressure hits you and you have to kind of think, wow, I need to do something again. So it's, that's definitely had an impact on my career and maybe think differently in how I'm mm -hmm. going to do next. And, and yeah, so all started rolling around about terraforming. How do you find inspiration for your track? What exactly everywhere. influences you as an artist? It's not, it's not just one thing, it's, it's everything. It's, uh, I, I, it's, it's no, no secret that I absolutely love um, film music. Again, it's the same, the same. It's the same recipe. It's, it's what sound effects and textures and and basically your music's dictating your emotion while watching the movie. So the inspiration behind how music and movie do this, mm -hmm. I want to be able to put this into trance music. So I get inspiration from many different ideas, even sound effects and movies. I can think, how can I change this into something really cool, and how it can have big contrast between um, sounds and um, textures and different sort of genres all blended together. So inspiration comes from anywhere, and you don't expect it. You just get an idea, oh, that's awesome idea, I'll try this, <laughs> and you do it. So, yeah, definitely definitely try different genres of music. You'll pick something out and you're going to try and figure out why you like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're releasing awesome track after awesome track, but okay. what about an album? Did you ever thought of that? Um, yes and no. <laughs> okay. Why yes and why not? Okay, yes and no. Well, I have been posting over the last few years little small two or three minute clips of mm -hmm. the, um, the cinematic stuff. I like to break away from the big trans tracks and the kicks and the bass and, yeah. and really, really spread my wings with some really ambient, chill out um, music. So I've collected quite a few, 15, 20, maybe 30 even, little small pieces mm -hmm. of this. And I think I've realized that I get a lot of questions, a lot of emails, not just about my, my trans music, but also about the cinema stuff. And a lot of people like to listen to it and I'm, and I'm very happy with this. So I think I've decided I'm going to put this together as a kind of like a legacy collection of the cinematic uh -huh. stuff. So it's not trance music, but when it, do you want to call it an album? No, it's not really an album, it's more of a collection of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to be putting that out pretty soon just for, um, just for the amount of requests I've had for it. Mm -hmm. But the idea of an album, yes, I've thought about it, but I haven't kind of um, decided I'm going to do one just yet, but I think it's in the, in the future. But what can you tell me about the remix you did for Anna Hera? Because we really loved it at Luminosity. Thank you. Well, everyone loves that melody. There's no question why that was track of the year yeah. last year. No, no question. Beautiful melody, harmonies. It's in a major key. It's uplifting. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's just got everything that trance for me is about. That's exactly what that yeah. is. And um, Perry Carson did it in a way, or Gorilla did it in a way which was kind of up to date and kept the original signs of Gorilla. Um, but for me. I wanted to just give it a little bit more of an injection of what I prefer, my, what I like to do. Yeah. So I didn't do a remix as in, I want a remix and everybody hears a different version of it. I purely done it just for myself, just to do it in my own set so it would work better with my own set. And I played it at, um, at Luminosity and the reaction was, wow, really good. And I get many, many questions and I'm sorry if I can't give it away, but I can't, <laughs> it's, it's not an official remix or anything. It's yeah, just, I wanted to ask you about no, it's just a rework for myself and my sets, and a few people have, have getting their hands on it, but yeah, I'm very, very happy with the response, and I'm really, really happy that people enjoyed it, and um, so yeah, that, that was pretty much it. I just wanted to give it a little bit of a, a new flavor. <laughs> <laughs> what about humor? Human, your Human. latest track. Human is something where, I don't know if you noticed, but my last few tracks, they're kind of, people will say the same, but it's a kind of a signature sound that I have. And I wanted to kind of have a trifecta of mm -hmm. the signature sound on my DB releases with FSOE. And I wanted to do a kind of a melody or a riff that you could easily hum, easily remember, not based on arps and melodies and loads of like the traditional kinds of trance. So I wanted a, a riff or a melody that you could easily sort of resonate with. 
make you feel a bit more human, a bit more whistle, a bit more natural. So I, I promised myself, because some people have told me, uh, some people recommended to me, don't, don't overthink your melodies. Just push record and just play something. Okay. And I did. And I, and, I, and I swear down that human was literally, I pushed record and I just had to record in my head and I just played this melody. And in the first take, I did not change a single note. Right. And that's exactly how it is. And I made that, I did this on purpose. And the result is, is, is that this is track. In new projects coming up? As ever. Many. <laughs> well, I've started like many. Everyone started many, but you don't finish them. <laughs> so, but yeah, I've, I've got a few things lined up. And a few Any collaborations. Any projects and... you can tell us about? Mm, not yet. Not yet. Fine. <laughs> What can I tell you? Tell us about your work with Shantayas. You did some uh, sound banks for for Fresh Squeeze and the Relentless track. Yes. What can you tell you? What can you tell us about that? About okay. this collaboration between well, both. Well, I've been I've been friends with Sean for many many years, and I helped on the Titanium label when he had this running, and we just built this working relationship, which. which turned into a good friendship mm -hmm. and um, we would Skype regularly talking about um, like patches and how to do this and how to do that and giving each other ideas for sound design and then we just realized when we looked into our, I've got like a folder and it's actually my folder <laughs> called Sean's shit so Sean <laughs> you give me so much shit I have a folder for you in this folder <laughs> um, this is like so many patches and we mm -hmm. realized we have we have a lot of patches here Yeah. Why don't we do a sound bank? So we've done a sound bank, and then I got it was popular, and we did a second one for another synth, and then we did a volume two. And as a matter of fact, um, there was literally a brand new one almost ready to the shelves um, from Sean and myself. And out of this, we end up kind of throwing ideas off each other, and a collaboration was born, but we didn't plan on a collaboration. No. It just kind of happened. <laughs> and it took a long time to do. It took a long, long time. It was just kind of on the side. It wasn't, okay, I want to work with you next. But we just kind of on the side ended up doing well this, and... Um, I think we're going to work on another one. Like we're going to plan to work on another one very soon. Who are the best trans producers at the moment, in your personal opinion? Well, <laughs> this is a very, very difficult and unfair question, I think. But, <laughs> but, but, um, if you ask me who my, I can't really say favorite because I respect all producers. I don't care if their their sounds is not as good as the top guys and it's mm -hmm. not polished enough and they haven't got the full understanding. But when I see a producer who is doing a track from here maybe two or three years ago and then six months later it's a little bit better and six, they're improving, yeah, they get my respect for this. They're working on it and they're trying and trying and trying. So this becomes my favorite guy. I like what you're doing. You get my respect. It doesn't have to be the most polished and most technically brilliant um, tracks for this. But there are quite quite a few people out there who are coming up um, very fast and. I'll have to think of some names. I don't. I don't want to single anyone out, but you know. I think you know yourself. If what I've just said kind of resonates with you, that you are improving and you can hear your, yourself yeah. improving, keep doing it because you will probably be on my list. So, and, my next question about the upcoming talents you mm -hmm. know and support in your cause and effect show. Mm -hmm. Can you name someone or there are, those people who are improving? There was, there, was, there, there, was, there was a few people over the last uh, year or so, the likes of um, um, Steve Decay. He's doing pretty well. I like, I like what he's doing. And um, uh, Stooney, George S. Stooney. He's awesome. So, yeah, he's very quiet in the industry. He's, he's, not, very, he's not, not as active on social media. And I love that because he is just doing what he wants to do. And when you hear it, I love it. But then some new guys who just come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm playing their stuff constantly, even in my sets, and um, uh, like redrive. Yeah. Very very very, um, relatively unknown names, but I think they're going to have very big futures. And um, it's not just the uplifting stuff either. Uh, Michael Kilios, these kind of people. Mm -hmm. How do you actually react to the question? Help me become a better producer. How do you react to these tips and tricks? Well, questions? it's um, it's kind of humbling to be asked because I was one of those guys asking for help. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. Six, seven years ago, maybe my productions were barely, barely audible, <laughs> not assignable or supportable, whatever word you want to use. And um, you, you, I would scour the internet looking for tools to help me and trying to watch YouTube videos and watch, uh, read tutorials and read people's feedback and try everything. And you just crying for help. But then you would message someone who you admire and inspire to, and you get a kind of a, a short answer. And I didn't didn't really I didn't really kind of react to this in a negative way. Obviously, the people are busy. I understand this. And yes, I do get quite a lot of 
questions about um, how do you do this, how can you do that, can you listen to this, give me feedback on this. Yeah. And if I have time to do it, I will, but I don't like to, um, I don't like to tell anybody you're doing anything wrong because they're not doing anything wrong. So what's the simplest advice you can give to someone fresh in this industry? Um, don't try to be someone else. Simple as that. Just do what you're doing and if you think it's not good enough yet, mm -hmm. it probably isn't. With which artist would you like to swap places for one day if you could? Not just trans. Any, any artist? Well, I'm going to say one everybody's probably expecting, but it's a film composer guy. Yeah, it is Hans Zimmer. I want to <laughs> experience the workload, the pressure. I want to experience if I am capable of uh, handling that kind of creativity and workload on demand in such a high profile situation. <laughs> the pressure. I'm curious if I'm even anywhere near able of doing this. And uh, yeah, I would love to experience this. And I'll ask you to. Give me this in writing, top 10 mm -hmm. biggest trans tracks ever, but you can give me the first trans track ever. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> you know it's what? difficult. I, I, the, track, I, I, the one I'll give you is the one that I took notice of, the, the one that was the most important sort of thing. Not the most important, but the one I kind of went, wow, what is this? Oh, yeah. Um, and it was the Goriello remix of Final Finale in This was the. Um, the sounds used in that were just like crazy good and I, I opened up a door into a world of music I was not aware of and I wanted this. Um, obviously we'd, we'd heard previously like Robert Miles' Children, 1994 I think it was, 93? Um, yeah. They're, was, they're about then. I was very young. It was young. 92. Was it 92? <laughs> Shit. Yeah. But, but, um, wow, okay, so that, that early on I was very, very, very young but there was something about it I really got some, these, it's of my favourite tracks but the more influential tracks for me. So the legend number one, but I'll, I'll try and make a list for you. What do you think about the trans community? Well, there's no trans community. There is no industry and I wouldn't be sitting here <laughs> being interviewed by you. So the trans community, we were, we were all a part of the trans community in the beginning. Yeah. Everyone started there. And it's really interesting to see what it was like when I was just going to the parties mm -hmm. and going, driving 10 hours across Europe just to go to a gig and flying all over the place just to, do, just to go and listen to some music and watch your favourite DJ play. And this is the, the essence of what it really is. That's what I love about it. The word trans family, people might say it's a cliche, hashtag trans family, stuff like that. But it genuinely, that's what it is. It is a family. I go to these gigs and I see the same faces. I see the same people from different countries. And we meet at the hotels and everyone has yeah. dinner and drinks together. Even last night we everywhere had a pre-meeting and everybody come from all over the world. And it's amazing. You don't have this kind of friendship in any other situation that I'm aware of in my life to be honest and this is the true meaning of the word community so I find the trans community amazing. I love it. Off topic question. Mm -hmm. But everyone has a hidden talent. Mm -hmm. What's yours? <laughs> <laughs> I asked other trans I um I can do I can do magic. Can you show us a trick? Not really, I don't really have anything with me. But yeah. <laughs> If I knew, no, <laughs> I can do. I, I, no, no, I can't do magic. I'm not like I'm not, I, can do, I can do like little kids' magic tricks and stuff like that, and make things just be card tricks. I'm, I'm, I, I like doing this. Do you have a message for our viewers? Yes, um, I would like to thank every single one of you for helping me get where I wanted to be. And if it wasn't for you guys supporting me, um, tagging me, playing my music, voting for me, and I wouldn't be doing what I've always wanted to do for a living. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I'll post Darren's top 10 trans tracks in the description below. Please follow him and transers.ro on social media. Also, I will post those links in the description. Until next time, don't forget to support your favorite artists because they do deserve all the support in the world. And keep listening to this awesome music. Bye!